Um, I want to start in Syria, uh, but further north uh, first. Mm -hmm. What's your understanding of the situation in Afrin right now? And um, coming on the heels, well, we'll start with that. Okay. Uh, well, let me let me add this. Um, the United States is not operating in Afrin. Uh, the United States <coughs> is not equipping anyone in Afrin. So our knowledge in terms of what is going on in Afrin is somewhat limited because we're not operating, because we're not equipping there, because U.S. forces are not there. So, okay, so you don't know at all what's going on there? Uh, you don't know that if, if, whether or not Syria, I mean, fine, you may not have people there, mm -hmm. you might not have people who you're supporting there, but you have eyes in the sky and, 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 and other ways of finding things out, So, but you don't know whether or not it's true that Syrian Troops have gone in with the with the permission of the Kurds and or and Matt, or I'd have to, I'd have to refer you to the DOD on that. Perhaps they have something that we're not able to provide on that on that matter. You know, I can tell you that the secretary had some uh, productive meetings uh, with his counterpart and also with uh, President Erdogan in Turkey, where they talked a lot about the overall situation in uh, in Syria and our concerns about that, in which we continue to stress for a de-escalation of violence, for people to not take actions that would escalate and exacerbate tensions there, and to uh, keep uh, keep an eye out for um, not uh, striking civilians. It's certainly right. something that we've stressed. Okay? Okay. Uh, Lori, hi. Hi. Uh, in a frame, would you, do you think it's reasonable to suggest that Russia has acted very cynically? They gave Turkey a green light to attack the Kurds in, Af in Afrin, and then a stalemate developed, and they used that stalemate then to try and extend Syrian regime control over the area? Uh, Lori, I'm, I'm not going to get into that. I'm not going to speak about, about what Turkey, maybe what Russia may be doing to Turkey, what Turkey may be doing to Russia. I'm just not going to get into that. You're not our, one of our goals is to de-escalate tensions and try to get the parties refocused on the fight against ISIS. You, but you're not going to say that the Russians are cynically using their leverage in Syria? Look, I, I think it's clear that they have been using their leverage in Syria. They have been backing, as we just talked about, Bashar al-Assad's regime. How many times have we talked about it here, that they were on the brink of collapse and who came in and who saved them back in 2015? Russia did. Russia bears a unique responsibility for the suffering and the plight of the Syrian people. Russia has also committed uh, to the Geneva process. Uh, so we expect Russia to be helpful in that front. Uh, we have yet to see that, but we hope they will be. And if I could ask you a question about the recent visit of Iran's Ali Akbar Baliati to Baghdad, who went there for an Islamic conference, and he met with various figures, including the Deputy Speaker of Parliament, who said that he agrees with the Iranians in rejecting any U.S. continued U.S. presence in the region. What's your comment on that? Yeah, I, I, I certainly heard about those remarks and those comments in some of those reports. You know, it would be natural for Iraq and Iran to want to have conversations. I mean, they're neighbors, right? As we talked about South Korea, as we talked about North Korea, having certain conversations because they are neighbors, that is something just natural and it is a fact of life that different countries may want to talk to talk with one another. Uh, the question of their foreign relations is something that gets back to Iraq. We are fully comfortable and confident in our relationship with the government of Iraq as key uh, strategic partners in the region. Uh, as you well know, we are there for the def uh, defeat of ISIS, but we're also there at the invitation of the Iraqi government. We value Iraq's independence. We have confidence in the Iraqi government and uh, are highly skeptical that they would uh, bow down to, to Iran. So we feel comfortable with them, and that would just be largely an internal matter if they want to have those conversations. <laughs>